One of my pastors, Pastor Chuck Smith, tells the story of a dear old saint who was in one of his early churches, I believe, not in Calvary Chapel, who used to come up to him every Sunday, this dear old lady, and just kind of make her way up. And he would greet her and she would say, Pastor Chuck, Jesus is still on the throne. Sometimes we act as if he's not. Sometimes we look at our situation and say, God must have missed this. But instead, it is your opportunity for faith, believing that he is, and that he is a rewarder of you. He is a rewarder of you because you are seeking him. Because you are seeking him. You see, here's how they tie together. Faith inspires praise. When you consider who God is, when you realize that He is the rewarder of you just because you're seeking Him, wow, what can you do but just sing some praise? You know, if you're driving in your car, praise, okay, one arm, praise God. Sing out. Nobody else is in the car. They can't hear how bad your voice is. Praise Him. Praise Him from the depth of your being because of who He is. But wait. Praise inspires faith. You see, it's a cycle. As we exercise faith, which is what Paul and Silas were doing, I believe, I don't think they were any different than you and I, and sitting in there in the stocks, in the dark, weren't going, well, I'm just confessing that this is going to be gone in a minute. Oh, this is going to be, uh, no problem. No, I believe they were experiencing the fear, and they were experiencing and wondering, what's going to happen? Are they going to execute us tomorrow? What's going to happen? But what they chose to do was to declare the praises of God. It's what saints did for hundreds of years in the first centuries of the church as they went to their execution and were not delivered from the execution. But they praised God Almighty for who He is, recognizing, actually to the point when you read the early church histories, that they considered it an honor to be able to die for the Lord. They recognized it was a reward. <laughs> I'm not there yet. But the Lord would bring us to that place. But Paul and Silas chose, instead of to live in the darkness of the fear of that place, they made a decision, a conscious decision to say, I will sing hymns unto my God. Which inspired faith. And that faith inspires praise. And around it goes. Now, the rest of the story is there was a mighty earthquake. They got freed. The jailer got delivered and everything else. That's not the end of every story. And it's not because they were praising and they praised God enough that God said, okay, you did what I wanted you to. You praised me, so now I'll deliver you. No. That was just God's plan for getting the jailer saved. That's what that was all about. Because sometimes you will find yourself sitting in the prison, singing a hymn, and no earthquake comes. And the stocks don't let go. The chains are not let loose. The doors don't open. Doesn't mean you're not singing right. It doesn't mean God isn't and has stopped rewarding you. It means that the best reward from the Father who loves you more than any other father is you sit there for a while because that's the best thing that he can bring about. Faith and praise. They go together. They feed and build on one another. And so if you find yourself full of fear and worry, meaning faith is at a low ebb, find some good hymns. Find some good songs. If you're not a singer, just read them. Begin to praise God. Open up the book of Psalms. Start with Psalm 32. 
Start with Psalm 32. It's a great psalm. Blessed is the one whose sins are forgiven. Wow. Whose iniquities are covered. Wow. And just declare that to God. And watch the faith rise and let that faith build more praise. God has created us for praise. You know, in eternity, one of the things we know we will be doing is praising God. So why not start now? Let's pray. Father, I thank You for Your great goodness to us. I thank You that You have put eternity in our hearts that we might catch glimpses of what eternity will be with You. Thank You for making the way for us through Christ that we might begin living eternally now. Lord, I pray that You would open the eyes of our understanding to see You, to know You for who You are, that it might cause praise to rise up from our heart. It might cause faith to grow in us. That we might be even more equipped, further empowered for those good works that You have ordained for us to walk in from before the time we were born. Lord, I pray that for each one here this morning, You would do Your work in revealing Yourself to them that they might catch enough of a glimpse to be able to continue to walk by faith instead of sight and to let the song of praise rise up from their spirit. Lord, when Your angels declared the birth of Jesus, they sang praises and glory to God in the highest, just as we sang this morning. Lord, remind us this week as we celebrate Christmas, the birth of our Savior, as those songs are ringing from the radio and even from the mall, Lord, that we would be reminded of praising You and giving You glory. And now may the Lord God richly bless and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace every day of your life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior and our King who is coming real soon. Amen. Amen. God bless you.